Hello everyone! Welcome to another Firebase Deep Dive. This month, we'll talk about the support for point-in-time recovery in Firestore that just became generally available. When you enable point-in-time recovery, you're protected against accidental deletion or writes in your database, which is very important since we're all humans and we all make mistakes sometimes. This new feature simplifies the recovery journey by providing access to any version of the documents in the database at any point in the past seven days. I'll show some examples of reading these documents versions later, but for now, it's important to know that we store document versions at a minute granularity. So you can provide access to any data stored in the databases at any minute within the seven day span. When it comes to billing, you are already charged for the size of your database. So these extra document versions just count towards that. There's a section in the documentation that covers all the pricing information, so be sure to read that before using the feature. Let's talk about performance. If your database already follows the best practice recommended in this documentation right here, then the use of point-in-time recovery shouldn't negatively affect the performance of reads or writes. I'll leave all the documentation links in the description below. Now that we know how this feature works and why it's so important, let's see how you can enable it in your project. Point-in-time recovery is disabled by default. So let's head over to the Google Cloud Console and navigate to the Firestore dashboard. Here you see the list of databases you have for that project. Select the one you want to enable point-in-time recovery for. You can navigate to the Disaster Recovery dashboard using this menu. Now click to edit the settings, check this box, and hit Save. Once the settings takes effect, you can see new fields in the Settings section. The retention period is the period in which Firestore retains all versions of data for the database, which in this case is 7 days. When this setting is enabled, any time you change or delete a document, Firestore will make a backup copy of the previous document version. When you uncheck the box, all those old documents versions are immediately deleted. Quick note, you need to have an owner role to manage point-in-time recovery settings. If you don't have the permissions that you need, you can ask your administrator to grant you the Cloud Data Store owner role for that specific project. Now let's see the two ways you can recover data. Performing a stale read is useful when you want to recover just some of the documents that were changed or deleted. For example, if you accidentally delete a particular document or incorrectly update a subset of data. To get this data back, you can perform a so-called stale read using the client libraries, REST API methods, or Firestore I.O. Apache Beam connector. Let's check how you can do this using the Java client library. First, you need to create a transaction options object by running read only options builder. Here you can specify for what specific moment in time you want to read data. Next, you need to run a transaction in Firestore that reads a document based on the document reference and pass the transaction options as a parameter. Firestore will then get the version of that document at that specific time that you specified in the options. Another way to recover data is by exporting your entire database at a given point in time. If any disaster happens that causes data loss or damage, you can export your database at a specific minute within the past seven days and import this again so that it becomes the current version. The documentation shows how to export data from a point-in-time recovery timestamp running gcloud commands. Importing is even simpler, as you can do it via gcloud commands or through the Cloud Console by clicking on the Import button and selecting the file you generated from running the export command before. If you also want to try out point-in-time recovery, head over to the Google Cloud Console, enable it for your project, and let us know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in another episode of Firebase Deep Dives. Oh,